Hello and welcome to me making semiconductors in my garage. Today I'll show you how to grow a layer of silicon dioxide on a silicon substrate. So I bought my silicon wafer from a company called MES Supplies. In particular it is a P-type silicon substrate. But first we had to break our wafer into small pieces but I decided it was necessary that we take a few photos before I sacrifice it for the greater good. I broke the wafer perpendicular to the flat. This is important because it allows us to break across the lattice lines. This gives us a very clean break through the wafer due to the wafer being one large crystal of silicon. Afterwards, I break my pieces into small rectangles that are perfect for our next step. To grow an oxide on a silicon piece, we have to heat it. But the oxide growth is very slow this way. To accelerate it, we pump steam over the silicon. So I set up an apparatus out of some glassware and a heating mantle. The steam will then flow through a piece of vinyl tubing. This however is a terrible way of doing it as the steam condenses in our tubing and shoots large amounts of water in directly into our furnace, which boils quite violently. In the future we'll make some improvements on this method. I used the tube furnace I constructed out of two aluminum silica fire bricks, a fused quartz tube, and some nichrome wire to heat our substrate. I wrapped the nichrome wire around the quartz tube till it had a resistance of about 10 ohms. I then carved the fire brick with a hole saw while making sure not to leave in any of the dust from carving. The control circuitry is an Arduino connected to a solid state relay with some code that turns the furnace on and off. Uh, this heats it up slowly over the course of two hours to a max temperature of 900 degrees Celsius. Once we have all our equipment set up, we can insert the substrate into the furnace and attach the hose from our steam generator. We leave the system like this for about an hour. This should give us an oxide thickness of about 500 nanometers according to our graph. As you watch, you can see how a large amount of water gets shot in directly into the furnace. This is problematic as it can easily crack our quartz tube and ruin our fun. Once an hour has passed, we remove the connections to our steam generator, and while the furnace is still hot, we push out our substrate. The first thing we know is that it's a beautiful blue color, telling us that we at least did something. We let the substrate cool on the end of the quartz tube for 10 minutes, then pull it out. We can tell the thickness of our oxide from the color. In the graph, we can see there are three bands of blue in the 100, 300, and 500 nanometer range. We're going to be optimistic here and say it's probably 500 nanometers. You can also see some defects in the oxide as it's bluer towards the end facing the steam and there are these weird red specks on it. This might be from water splashing on the silicon walls in the furnace causing those specks to oxidize more giving us a red color on them. It seems that most of our problems stem from the fact that our steam generator sucks so in the future we're going to improve this method by heating our steam to a high temperature as well as having a long evaporation coil to remove excess liquid water. In a later video, we'll also go into the process of doping our silicon and go into the structure of semiconductor devices.